Hello people, uh, I'm Ross McDonough, aka The Nomadic Veteran. We sold our house in Shropshire, England to move into that van behind us named Clover and we're currently down in the Algarve in Portugal enjoying this sunshine. This video is sponsored by Dylan McAster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. Uh, after leaving the Marines, I went into, into close protection. It was a pretty well paid job at the time for the risk reward sort of scenario. I very much got gripped by consumerism. We were lacking something, we were missing something out on life. I was working in Iraq at the time and I came back and Caroline said, look, you should watch this documentary, it's called Minimalism. And I sat down and I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll, I'll pay token effort to it. And then I watched it. As I was watching it, the light bulb moment went off and I was like, these two guys have, have nailed it. I, what are we doing? From there on in, we just, we kind of implemented this plan. And this is going back like two, three years now. We'll sell everything or 95% of our, of our possessions and we will move into a van and we will travel the world. And then that's exactly what we did. So for the next couple of years, I kept working in Iraq, but the whole overall goal was we get a van and we, we move into it. And we lived in like a converted farmhouse. We didn't want to miss that, that home. That was our home and we loved our home. So it was quite hard to get rid of it. So we wanted something where we'd be equally happy living in full time. But this goes against what everyone else is, is probably tells you online is because I was working in Iraq at the time. I had to buy a van online uh, and I know how ridiculous that is. That cost us uh, £5,200 and it had just shy of 100,000 miles on, on the engine. We didn't convert the van ourselves uh, for two reasons. One, because I am ridiculously bad at any sort of DIY. If I'd done it, it would have been a mattress in the back with a, with a bucket for a toilet. And the second reason, when we did the maths on it, it would be better off financially for me to work away and actually get a professional company to do it. The added benefit of that was it comes with a warranty. So then we, we basically, we found a couple and we, we met up with them and we're like, this is what we want. And they said, sure, we can do that. And then it took them approximately six months to, to get it done. All the time I was out in Iraq, I finished on like a five month rotation out there. And that cost us, if I remember correctly, I was like 16 and a half thousand pounds. So all in all, about 22,000 pounds, I'd say. So this is Clover. She is a Fiat Ducato 2.3 litre diesel engine. First thing you'll see is this is our gas fill up point. So we have a 30 litre underslung gas tank. So obviously we can fill it up to 80%. So we've got 24 litres of, of gas. That lasts us an age. This is one thing which a lot of people actually tend to ask me about is, is deadlocks. Before we bought the van, when we were still going through the process of, of looking at vans, the reoccurring theme was that they're really easy to break into and I thought with my background it would be silly if I didn't try and put a little bit of extra security on there so we got deadlocks fitted to every single every single door on there granted it won't stop someone if they're determined enough but it certainly you know it might put them off and hopefully pick on someone else's van so sorry we've got a couple of skylights the front one is just a I think it's a regular size skylight just to let a bit of light into the top there but for the dining area and the the, the bedding or the bedroom should I say We've got like an extra large skylight, so it's, it's awesome. It provides a nice airflow through the van as well, and it also just lets in stacks of light. On top as well, we've got two 125 watt solar panels. That feeds into our, into our two leisure batteries, which are uh, 115 each. As we move back, uh, you'll see the deadlock again, and then what you'll also see is the, uh, the reversing camera. As you can imagine, a lot of my friends gave me a lot of grief over having a reversing camera, being a bloke and that. It's been a, a godsend, to be honest, uh, and it's probably saved me from backing into a few things in our time. So that was definitely a, uh, a great investment, if I do say so myself. We've got a gas dropout in the kitchen area there. That's just obviously a nice safety feature. So underneath here, we've got um, oof, our electrical plug-in point. In all honesty, we've never used it. And then above that, we've got our fresh water tank. Uh, fill-in station. So we've got two underslung tanks which combine 150 litres of fresh water. In terms of the cab, it's just a bog standard cab. What you will see if you ever look in there, we have to keep certain bits and pieces like our inflatable kayak, our bodyboard, stuff like that. So when we are driving somewhere, they get chucked into the back. When we settle down for the night, they get chucked in the front. So we shall start here. First off, we've got the few breakers for our water heater and our gas. So what we tend to do is if we're gonna leave the dogs in the van on their own, which we don't like to do, to be honest, uh, we'll turn the breakers off because the last thing we wanna do is one of them jumps on the oven and they turn the gas off. And above that then we've got our water display. And then above that, this is our gasset uh, display. So it's an LED display. This is something which we, we asked the, the wild van to do. We call it a doggy shower. Granted, it is just a shower actually, but we use it on the dogs. So when we've been out of the beach or whatever, or you know what, it's been a bit of a muddy day, we, uh, they have to get a shower. So it, it is cold water, so they're not overly impressed, but it, it saves the inside from getting filthy. So 
it's ideal just to give them a quick, quick hose down. The last little bit to make it a bit more uh, dog friendly was we didn't want to just always have our door open, uh, closed, should I say. We asked the, the company to make what we call a doggy gate. Essentially, it's a kiddie gate, but again, it's for dogs. So we just move that across. The dogs are safe and sound in there. We can sit outside, we can do our own little thing. Uh, and then to, to open it, just lift it up, comes out the latch there. And that's the doggy gate. Happy days. We, we moved out of like a, a converted farmhouse. Um, so we wanted to get that same sort of style, that, that sort of like feeling back. Um, and the one thing again, Wild Van did was, this is all 1920s uh, reclaimed floorboards. With the kitchen area in general, it's a lot of work surface area as well. So we're never lacking for that. And then obviously above the sink, we've got like another little bit of wooden surface there, just in case uh, we want to hide dirty dishes when people come around, etc. Here we go. We've got three drawers moving, moving down there. Same as every other van tour. It's got knives, forks, spoons. Uh, we keep our, cut, our plates and bowls in there. This one is just for like, you know, cutting boards, big knives, all that good stuff. And on the bottom here, we've got this big pull out drawer. We've got our bin and we keep all our cleaning utensils in there as well. So the next one, this is what we get asked about quite a lot actually. This is a, a genuine 1960s Cala gas oven. It's really good actually, uh, not much I can say to it. It's got two hobs on the top, it's got a grill in the middle and then it's the oven part in the bottom and it works a treat, so we're happy with that. Bit more work service back here and then this is where we keep all our food. What we also have in here actually is we've got the button for the automated water pump. So if we want to use water, all our water is pressurized basically. So we don't have to do the foot pump thing to get water through, it's always there. If we start running low on water, then we just turn it off because it starts making that gurgling noise. And then what we've also got next to that is our water heater switches. One's gas and one's electric. We only ever use the gas one. It warms the water up in about 20 to 30 minutes and it's enough for a hot shower or to do the dishes and whatnot. Also got a first aid kit and a fire blanket just in case this thing should erupt. Our dish rack. It's a really brilliant bit of kit. So you do your dishes, you need somewhere to, for them to dry. You chuck them on there, they dry, you put them away, happy days. All you'll do then is any excess water, you pull out the tray, you throw away, you put it back in, or you dry it off, you put it back in, and then that literally just folds up and it's out of the way. Really good bit of kit, really chuffed with that. The controversial bit of kit uh, is, the, is the Belfast sink. It fits in well with the kitchen and it's a really big sink, so it, it's ideal for, like I said, for my wife to be washing her hair if she just wants to wash her hair and not jump in the shower. And then underneath here, we've got a 45 litre compressor fridge uh, with a little freezer top at the bit at the top there. It's not the world's biggest fridge, but it, it certainly works for us. We specifically asked Wild Van to make this for us. It's a wardrobe for my wife. It's turned into more than a wardrobe at the moment because it just seems to hold yoga mats, hoovers, paddles, anything we can get in there. At the back is the panel for the solar in case we have any issues. Because we do like to be out and about quite a bit, we get quite sweaty and it's nice to be able to actually clean yourself and, and have a shower. That being said, because showers do take up a lot of water, we don't use it every day, otherwise we just run out of water every day, but it is nice when you get particularly dirty or honking to jump in the shower. You'll see a little bit of storage up the top there. The toilet we've got is a uh, 18 litre Thetford ca cassette toilet. It works for us. It, it'll last two or three days and then we need to empty it. This is our dining area slash bedroom. Overhead storage and the doors are really well. They, once they close, nothing ever falls out when we're driving. The projector. At first, we used to use it all the time, to be honest, because we were like, we love watching films on the projector. And we still, we, as a treat now, we still do. It's really great because obviously it's a white wall, so we just, we can plug a USB pen at the back there with a the film. I'd say the only downside, it does use a fair bit of energy on the old, uh, on the old inverter. This side here is just uh, where we've got the consumer unit. We've got all the uh, fuses, the fuse box, should I say. And then this section here, this is where actually uh, we keep uh, our bedding during the day. So sometimes we do keep the bed out, uh, if we're feeling particularly lazy. But most of the time, if we want to get work done, it feels a bit more spacious when you put the, the actual bed away. And then over here, this is where the inverter and the leisure batteries are kept as well. We've actually got a gas Propex heater, so it's not a diesel one. Storage library area. These are books I pretend to read. Then we've got these five little, really handy little uh, drawers here. We just keep odd bits and pieces. And then we've got five drawers on each side. Closed drawers, the majority of them. Uh, we keep a few board games, but as you'll see here, because it is quite a large piece, there's plenty of storage in there. That one's just for the dog's harnesses and food mats and all that good stuff. As you can imagine, 10 drawers with that, with that space, it's brilliant. When you're working in a, in a hostile environment or where you're serving in the military, your life can literally change in a, in a, in a heartbeat. 
that, that applies to, to everyday people as well. You know, you can, you can wake up in the morning and you ain't going to bed at night. It's, it's game over. You don't know how long you've got. We get told that you've got to work from the age of like 16 till 65 or something and you get one holiday a year. But when you hit 65, that's when you can go and retire and you can see the rest of the world. Most people I know who have got to that stage, they're, they're tired and all they want to do is just chill out at home and, you know, yeah, the mortgage is paid off and, but I don't understand why we don't push it like, you want to be doing this in your 20s, your 30s, when you're still young and you've got that, 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 that energy for life. We're in a society now where the bigger the house, the better the sports car, the more extravagant your life is, you're deemed as successful. But it, you've got to decide what your definition of success is. And you know what? Downsizing for us has been awesome. What's the very worst that can happen? Like if you do end up selling your home or you're renting at the moment and you move out and you move into van life and you give it a go for six months and you go, you know what, well, that really isn't for me sell the van you can go find other place this is what people keep thinking they're like oh you're gonna live in a van it's like yeah i'm not gonna live in a van forever this isn't me until i'm 75 and i die it's like this is just now so i'd say give it a go if it doesn't work out try someone else what have we got to lose